It's David. I'm a co-play frontier from the Genesis group. I'm going to try to get you guys a quick market update. As you saw from the previous video, I did say, you know, I expect within, um, we'll see the bottom soon, right? And so we're at around 20,000 when we made that video a couple days back. Or, yeah, about two days back. And now look at it now. It went already down to 17,500 okay seventeen thousand five hundred eighty eight dollars all right do i still expect bitcoin to go lower yes i do i expect bitcoin to go lower uh i want to show you guys something from crypto crew university okay from steve all right please check out that pre uh his video just find him online i mean on youtube all right and also if you want to um, purchase any of his courses i will leave uh, a link in the description Okay, so here, if you look at back in 2011, this is a 200-day moving average, just the orange line. Then you have the RSI at a two-day move and a uh, stochastic RSI in the bottom on the two-day. And whenever all three went underneath, okay, this RSI, the bottom's at 26, the so stochastic is at 20. When all three matches at the bottom, you had your bottom. Okay, that was in 2011. All right. Now, let's look at, so you see it here, right? All three hit this bottom. Okay. Once again, check out the video. Obviously, he'll, he'll explain it better. Now, look right here in 2015. Once again, Bitcoin was under 200-day moving average. The RSI was under 26 the stochastic rsi boom was under 20 it all matched and you had your bottom okay look at 2018 again under 200 day moving average rsi is under 26 stochastic rsi is under 20 boom you had your bottom okay look at 2020 same thing under 200 day moving average, the RSI is under 26, stochastic is under 20. All right. Here, 2022, we almost had something similar, but not really. When Bitcoin was under 20 here, RSI just made it under 26, but stochastic RSI, the red line, was still not under. 20 so you had a false signal but i'm sorry look at it now we're getting there now right here and so here i actually set it up here okay and what i'm waiting is for tomorrow or tuesday right obviously bitcoin's under 200 day moving average Okay, the stochastic RSI, the RSI is under 26, but the stochastic RSI, which is this right here, we haven't seen a print, okay? We haven't seen a print, so that red line needs to print, okay? Let's say Bitcoin exploded up to like $32,000 all of a sudden, uh, the lines would change. So we haven't seen a print with the stochastic RSI, okay? And also, even with um, the RSI, the two-day RSI, you know, so basically Monday, Tuesday, we're going to have to print, and then we'll have a bottom in all three. Now, that doesn't mean as soon as you have a print, that's the exact bottom, because remember, it can last a couple days more. Okay? If you look here, all right, if you look here, like... Yeah, you had all three, but how long were all three at the bottom? You know, like, how long did it take? All right, and so, yeah, you can have all three, but that period might last a couple of days. It can last a couple of days. All right, that's all I'm saying. Okay. So, like here in 2011, 
Okay, it, it can last a couple of days. All right. So right now we still have, you know, probably what Monday or or Tuesday when you're going to have a print, but also you, you might still have a couple of days or so. Okay? You might still have a couple of days or so. So we'll see how this plays out. You know, but once again, I imagine you, you're going to have uh, a bottom coming sooner than later if, if all this plays out. Now, does this guarantee that if all three matches we have a bottom? No, but once again, we're going by statistics. And statistics is in our favor that chances are that would be the bottom. Okay. If I go by statistics, chances are we're going to, you know, right now we're at 18,000. But we're going to go to the lower teens where we might see like a fourteen to $12,000 Bitcoin. If we go by statistics, I think I think it's called CMA or CME gap where there's a 9000 around the $9,000 range. There's a gap. And so that gap can be filled on this dump. Okay. So we're all going by statistics. There's no guarantees. But... You know, when I told you back at 45,000, I sold out, it could go up to 48,000. Why did I say all those numbers? I was just going by statistics, okay? Why did I say after that, even a month ago, I showed you guys that I, I put in buy orders over a month ago. Why did I put in those buy orders? I put in buy orders. Oh, anyway, you can check my previous videos from before. I guess I, I erased it here, but why did I put in buy orders? I put in buy orders by going by statistics. I said, don't be greedy for me. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm just going by statistic. And I wasn't being greedy. I was just being dollar costing average where, you know, from 23,000 all day to 12,000, I still have over, you know, 40% uh, still in, in tether. Where when it, if it goes under twelve thousand, I'm still ready to keep buying in. Why? I'm just doing all that just by statistics. I'm not. It's, it's in our favor if you're holding cash or whatever tether to buy in than if you were just holding and not you know and and letting it just ride it all the way down where you're gonna get your feelings hurt. Okay. So all of you, if you went by what I did. Okay, because remember, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, and I gave you reasons why. And you started buying in around the times that I, I mentioned. And, um, you know, you have your buy orders in, and you know you saved yourself money because you would have kept your Bitcoin or, or whatever coins back when Bitcoin was at, you know, 45, 48,000 or 30,000 or 20, well, about 30,000. And you started buying in, you put in your buy orders, you started, you know, just doing whatever I'm doing, even though I didn't tell you to do it. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, but you decided to follow along. Well, all I have to say is you're welcome. Okay, all I have to say is you're welcome. And why did I, you know, go by statistics instead of emotions and feelings? Because I told you I went through it last year. I got burned and just crushed in the past bear previous bear market where this bear market I'm you know just I'm saying F it to the whales and, and and this you know system of suckering people in where I'm just going by the charts I'm going by statistics and that's it I'm putting the emotions away and just putting the charts ahead of me and following the charts and just putting in my averages on 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 possibilities the probabilities okay and so it's in our favor so chances are tonight now right now for me it's sunday 4 p.m 4 25 p.m if you look at the top left hand corner but probably tonight you know bitcoin's gonna smash through maybe seventeen thousand. now monday okay one monday in u.s time western time um you might have a sell-off on ethereum and if Bitcoin goes low enough in the lower 14,000, you'll probably have a sell-off in Bitcoin, okay? Because you have these liquidations with Celsius or something else with Ethereum, where you're going to have prices just plummet down. And that's probably the best chance where this um, CME gap, whatever, around 9,000 is going to get filled. And if that happens, those are just 
excellent buying opportunities for us. If that happens, chances are we might not. Um, that's it. That'll be the bottom. That'll be the bottom unless we have a a 2011 situation where if you look very close to 2011, you had the bottom, then it rolled up, and then, you know, you had another bottom here. Okay? But by then, if you look up, the RSI is already out. Okay? Now, that might happen this time. You never know. Okay? Because it's in the charts. It's, it's in the realm of possibilities. But even if you bought in here, I mean, that's pretty freaking good. Okay, that's pretty freaking good. Once again, this only happened once, right? It pretty much marked the bottom, unless you want to really count that. But anyway, let's say it marked the bottom there. It marked the bottom in 2018, 2020. And it's probably going to mark the bottom in 2022. Okay, why? It happened three times in the past. It pretty much hit the bottom. Boom. All right, and we're and if you look here, we're pretty much close. Okay, I'm just waiting for you know tomorrow or Tuesday, whatever, for for all of this to print, and then if it happens, let's say Monday, let's say it prints Monday. Well, then Tuesday, Wednesday, by then we might have all the sell-offs, and that's that's it. That's the bottom. Um, you know, yeah, I mean that's the bottom. So. Unless we have a 2011 situation here. But even then, you pretty much bought it so close to the bottom that whatever, you know. If anything, if this happens, this gives you your your second opportunity for whatever you missed, okay. So, yeah, I'm just going by the statistics. Nothing is guaranteed. There's no promises that Bitcoin's going to go down to 13, you know, 14 thousand something 13,000 something 12,000 something there's no guarantee that bitcoin has to fill in a past cme gap whatever from years ago okay but what are the chances the probabilities well it's it's in your favor it's in our favor for the people who liquidated back when bitcoin was at whatever price okay in my kids was around 45,000 and been waiting for this time Okay, and then I told you my strategy. So I'm buying Bitcoin first, and then later the altcoins are going to get dragged down. Okay, so like, look, if you look at like, let's look at EOS, because I do like EOS. I think this next upcoming bull run EOS is going to be amazing. But if you look at EOS compared to Bitcoin, some of these altcoins are performing pretty well. Okay, like, look at Solana. $25.82, right? If you look at Bitcoin, when Bitcoin was probably dumped around, you know, the first time went under $20,000, that's when Solana hit its bottom, okay? That was a one, two, three, four, five, six days ago, six days ago. Well, Bitcoin, six days ago, one, two, three, four, five, six, six days ago, Bitcoin was like at 20000 Right, so even when Bitcoin went down to seventeen thousand five hundred, you know, six hundred, Solana didn't make a new bottom. You guys get what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to tell you is, you have certain coins just by when you look at it, you know, you know that later these coins are gonna get crushed. Like if you think they went down, just wait. Okay, now remember, I'm not your financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm telling you what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to buy the alts. I'm buying Bitcoin. Okay, now I did put some buy orders way back for EOS, but what I just decided to, to keep him. But anyway, look, I'm not buying alts other than buy orders I made back then. The whole point is, is because I know Bitcoin will after the near the bottom or bottom, it'll recover better than the other altcoins because for the following months after even year or a year and some change, the altcoins will get dragged down even more while Bitcoin will, you know, pretty much kind of hit some sideway movements with ups and downs during that time. So Bitcoin will obviously overvalue, it's going to be out, you know, it's going to be more valuable than the other cryptocurrency so then when the times come then i will start selling some of my e my bitcoins 
for these other altcoins. Okay, because it'll outprove the dollar. Now, if you do miss, if you do miss, let's say like, and I do miss, and I have I have tether, then what I would do is what same thing what I'll do with my EO. I mean my bitcoins, my bitcoins. Okay, I would just put it in here where I'm gonna get you know five percent to eight point nineteen percent. Okay, with tether. I put it on fixed savings at five percent or flexible at ten percent, whatever the case is. I would try. I would, I would do that to certain periods of time to collect as much interest as I can, while these other altcoins are getting smashed down, and then buy the altcoins when I think they are towards their bottoms. And when I do do that, I'm gonna tell y'all when I think that time is, and I'll show you why. I'm doing it and the way I'm doing it, I'll give y'all reasons why, and then it's up to you. You can follow suit or you take in other people's other information from other people and do whatever you think is right. Okay, but that's how I'm gonna play this game. Once again, I told you Cocoin's gonna get dragged down, it is getting dragged down. I'm not gonna lie, I see Coke going under that 71 cents. Okay, in, in the next prior six months, it's gonna get I hate to say it, but it's gonna get smashed down. And um you know, that doesn't mean nothing about the project. The project's great. It has great leadership. It has great fundamentals. It has, you know, everything is great about it, but it's all about the market, okay? And, and when it comes to the market, you have, uh, you know, they're manipulating it to go down. When it comes to manipulation, it doesn't matter how they manipulate. They can manipulate it to make it go up or manipulate it to make it go down. They're going to manipulate it wherever they feel that it is in their favor, Okay, and right now it is in the favor of the market to manipulate it to make it go down instead of up. And so that's what you're seeing. That's what you're going to see with CoCoin. I do plan on making a special video about CoCoin and how we can just destroy the whales. But it's going to be some information in there that you're not going to like. But once again, I'm not here to tell you guys some lies and tell you, you know, hype things up and make you feel better. I'm here to tell you guys the truth of what I really think. OK, um, you know, when when uh, when I got um, linked up to Lady Coke play with with one of um, the, the big bros that I know, you know, the whole point of me explaining things about Coke play or giving guys these market updates wasn't to lie to you, was just to tell you straight up what I think and to be upfront. Right. And if you follow the especially the markets, I mean, you know, honestly, like for the most part, I think I've been pretty legit about it. And I've been pretty right. Right. And and even the things I say about Coke play is not just me. You read it. I've, I've show you guys articles. I get articles about it. And then it, it just is in confluence. It just matches what I say about how how the fundamentals and everything about Coke play is 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 a solid plan with good leadership okay so yeah do i see bitcoin still going down yet yeah, i think we're going to see a lot of action probably this week it can never go into next week but it's probably going to be this week where we're going to see a lot of action okay so can i be wrong i can be wrong but i'm going if i go by statistics i'm probably going to be more right than wrong okay and when it comes to the bottom, there's a good chance. There's a good chance. But can we see another bottom later? I mean, 2011, it did show. But I'm saying, even if we get close to the bottom here, it's pretty good. Like, you don't have to be greedy. You don't have to try to catch the very bottom. If you try to catch the very bottom, you're probably going to miss it anyway. That's why I'm dollar costing averaging. Showed y'all what I'm doing. Uh, you don't have to be greedy in the market. Okay, like no one's perfect. If you were really that good, go you would have been hitting the lottery. All right. You're you're listening to to this channel or other channels for a reason. It's because you don't know. It's because you're not perfect. No channel's perfect. They're just giving you experience on how to make the best choices out of what's going on. All right. So Trust me, you try to be the hero and try to try to hit the very bottom or sell out the very top. You could go ahead, try it, but you're probably going to fail like everyone else. Notice I said everyone else, okay? People dollar cost average in and sell dollar cost average out, okay? All right, everyone, please take good care of yourself. Please take good physical care of yourself. Everyone, you want to um, 
you know, please just take good mental and spiritual care of yourself, okay? That's really important. Surround yourself with the right people. You want to prep up because inflation will continue, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if they raise it up. But think about this. Inflation, they says 8.6%. But if they use the 1980s um, measurement, the way they measured inflation back in the 1980s or early 1980s, is really inflation is at like 18, 19%. It's at a historic high. Okay, they changed the way they measure inflation is why it's getting lower. But it's really over 18, like, you know, it's around 18%, put it that way, maybe higher. On top of that, on top of that, if you raise interest rates 0.75, when even with the new form of measuring in, um, inflation as 8.6, really, you think that's going to stop inflation? No. You understand inflate you need to you need to raise inflation at least you know nine ten percent or something to really beat it down fast so and as I told you guys before, it does you know probably I don't know when maybe what like between August to November because I can't give you specific months or you know dates but i I'm just telling you a time frame. Because, you know, his, historically, what's going to happen is the interest rates will go up too high. It's going to crash the markets too much, okay? Just like the housing and all of that. And what's going to happen is they're going to lower the interest rates to boost up the stocks again. And when that happens, it's going to boost up the cryptos. But you're probably, I don't think you're going to see like a, a right away boost. You might see some sideways. Some up movements, whatever, but because these are cycles, at least for Bitcoin, okay? Uh, you know, other markets have their own cycles, okay? So you got to understand, you got to follow the cycles. The cycles will kind of give you a better idea how, how which way you want to invest and which, what's favoring you statistically, okay? That's just how I do it. And so... Yeah, I mean, chances are, historically, they're going to give up on raising the interest rates. And they're going to try to save the stock market. And they're going to lower the interest rates, okay? Just like I made a video before about housing, right? And I told one of my clients that I teach, I was like, why would you want to buy a house now that's worth $600 million won in Korea? I think I made a video about this, but if I did it, uh, I'm just telling you what what we talked about. He wanted to buy an apartment for 600 million won. I told him, don't do it. Because you're going to, that apartment is going to go down probably five, 400 million won or 400 something million won in the next year, year, year and a half. Because if you look at, you raise the interest rates right now in Korea, the interest rates is up around 5%. It's going to go up even higher because the BOK is going to follow suit with the Fed. With the Bank of Korea is the BOK. And interest rates for houses will go up even higher. Uh, inflation is up. And what happens is people will have less money to spend. Uh, small businesses that are not essential small businesses, like they're type of small businesses that just are based on people who can buy those products out of luxury. A lot of those businesses are going to go out of business because people will have less money to spend because they're spending more money currency-wise on the essentials like food, gas, paying rent. Because, you know, I'm a homeowner. I expect my mortgage, you know, to go up because the interest rate is going to go up because I don't have, you know, it's not fixed on my interest rate. But it won't be as bad because I bu I bought... Uh, my interest rate originally was at like, you know, like 3.1, 3.2%. But the whole point is it's going to go up anyway. And so what happens is then I'll have less money. Everyone has less money, right? Some of these businesses are going to go out of business. What happens is then they can't afford their mortgage payments. They're going to have to sell the homes. But when they start selling the homes, they're going to realize that no one has money. No one's trying to buy the home. Because people don't want to pay high interest, especially when they're accustomed to lower interest, 
and they don't want to take the risk when they don't they're not making as money to buy another home. And so what happens is then they would have to sell their apartments or whatever they own tens of millions of won, which is tens of thousands of dollars lower than previous or even a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred million won lower, even more until you find a new set of buyers. Okay, so imagine like, let's say this is homes, it's like Bitcoin, all right? So you had buyers in the past at 50 something thousand dollars, mortgage rates go up, boom, now you're starting to have buyers at 30,000. So you had to drop it like, let's say $20,000 or whatever, not 20, but like, um, I don't know, $15,000. Then as the economy tanks even worse, you got to keep lowering, keep lowering prices till you find new set of buyers at that price, which is like thirty thousand, and it goes all the way down to eighteen thousand, seventeen thousand. And apartments are the same way. You have to keep lowering prices until you find buyers at that price. And because the economy is going to get crashed, lots of people are going out of business, which is going to make people have to sell their homes, but you're going to have less buyers, so they're going to have to keep reducing prices until they find buyers at those prices. And why would there be buyers at those prices? Well, for example, the guy who has who want to buy an apartment for 600 million won, let's just say out of theory, he has 300 million won saved. And I told him, why would you buy a freaking apartment at 600 million won now when that thing can go down to even 400 something million won? I told him, let's say for in theory, it goes down to 400 million won. And I told him, well, then you put your 300 million won down payment and you get a loan from a bank for 100 million won and pay 5% interest. Well, that's a hell of a lot cheaper than buying a home now for 300 million won. And take 300 million won um, loan from a bank and buy it at 5% interest. Or even, you know, back when you would have bought it at 3% interest. It's a hell of a lot cheaper. Okay? And then another four or five years later, the interest rates will go back down. Or three years later, or two years. It doesn't matter. After, um, the interest rates will go back down. You refinance, and then out of 100 million won, you go back to paying only 3% interest, and then you're, you're making a killing. So that's why. So things are going to get bad, um, and you want to prep for that. If, you're, if you own cash, your opportunity is coming. Like, this is going to be like a dream come true if you're one of those people who saved up a lot of cash. Your opportunity is coming, okay? And that's just my opinion. Anyway, so yeah, you want to prepare for all of that, inflation, all of that, all right? All right, everyone, um, sorry this has been a long video. I try to make it short, but then I always end up having more to talk about. <laughs> so anyway, all right, everyone, God bless y'all, love you guys, and Coco.